House Bolton, an ancient and powerful house of the north that ruled from their seat, the Dreadfort, a strong castle made completely of stone with thick walls and massive towers. Like most of the northerners, they descended from the first men that came to Westeros during the Dawn Age. House Bolton's words? Our blades are sharp. But they have a more common saying, a flayed man holds no secrets. At the beginning of the series, their house is considered one of the most powerful in the north, under the Starks of course. But there was a time that the Boltons didn't bow to anyone. This was before the Starks completed their conquest of the north and united all the houses under them. During this time, thousands of years before the Andals even invaded, the Boltons were kings of their land, a domain that stretched from the Last River to the White Knife, and as far south as the Sheep's Head. This is a time when they were known as the Red Kings. It probably isn't surprising to most that throughout this time the Red Kings and the Starks never really got along. It is said their hostility towards each other goes back all the way to the Long Night. This hostility would of course grow as the Starks conquered more and more territory of the North, seeking to unite the lands under their rule. It's said of all the enemies and conquests the Starks faced in uniting the North, the Boltons would be their bitterest foe. In fact, the battles between these two ancient families is said to be legion. Let's talk about the three known battles between House Stark and House Bolton before the North was united, which includes the Boltons' final stand, then the battles they fought as the Starks' vassals, and then their rebellions. While we don't have much detail on these battles, we know a few things. Let's start with the battles before the North unification. We know a man named King Royce Bolton II once took Winterfell and burned it thousands of years ago and before the Andal invasion. A descendant of his, King Royce IV, nicknamed the Red Arm, did the same three centuries later. Fun fact, Royce IV was known as the Red Arm for his habit of plunging his arm into the bellies of captive foes and pulling out their entrails with his bare hands. And this wasn't the only unsavory habit of the Boltons. They had a reputation of capturing Stark princes and other Stark enemies, flaying them, and wearing their skins as cloaks. This practice would go on for quite a while, until about a thousand-ish years ago when they agreed to stop flaying people. Of course, did they really stop? We know members of their house still flay people. Regardless of whether they still do or not, many of the Northerners still consider House Bolton to be a cruel and cunning house and their history of flaying strengthens those opinions. Besides those two battles before the unification of the North, we know that the Dreadfort would finally fall to the Starks. The last Red King, Rogar the Huntsman, swore his fealty to the King of Winter and sent his sons to Winterfell as hostages. This timing couldn't have been better, as just when House Bolton finally knelt to the Starks, the Andals began to cross the sea to invade Westeros. With the Andals pouring onto the Norse eastern shores, the current King of Winterfell, Theon Stark, needed help to repel them. Here he made common cause with the Boltons, and together, Starks and Boltons smashed the Andal warlord Argos Sevenstar at the Battle of the Weeping Water. The Boltons would again serve faithfully to the Starks 2,000 years ago during the Rape of the Three Sisters, the Northern Conquest of the Three Sisters. Now, there are some pretty nasty chronicles of what happened during these battles, and part of me believes that if any of them are true, it's because of what House Bolton and their men got up to. Of course, other Northmen could have joined in as well. Here's a description of the Northmen from the Rape of the Three Sisters. Wild Northmen killing children to fill their cooking pots. Soldiers drawing the entrails from living men to wind them around spits. The execution of 3,000 warriors in a single day at the Headman's Mount. Balthazar Bolton's Pink Pavilion, made from the flayed skins of a hundred sister men. Yes, yeah, some or most of that may have been exaggerated, but given the Boltons' reputation, it isn't too hard to believe some of these stories hold some truth and were done by the Boltons. Flayed Skin Pavilion, that is House Bolton Home Decorating 101. How much would the Starks let them get away with? That's unknown. We don't know much about the ruling Stark during this time or how aware he was of what his vassal was doing, or supposedly doing. Fast forward to Robert's Rebellion in 282 and 283 AC. When Lord Eddard Stark called his banners, House Bolton would again serve faithfully, at this time under Lord Roos Bolton. Roos would answer the call and fight in the Battle of the Trident. Roos will, of course, get his own video. But those are all the times we know of that the Boltons obeyed their Stark masters. Let's end with talks of their rebellions. Swearing fealty, helping with the Andal invasion, and other wars doesn't mean the Boltons always played nice. During King Edric Snowbeard's reign that lasted nearly a century, 
The Boltons would attempt to seize control of his faltering rule, and Winterfell, they would fail. Sometime before the Rape of the Three Sisters, which occurred 2,000 years ago, the Boltons would rise up in rebellion along with House Greystark, a cadet branch of House Stark. This rebellion would end in failure as well, with House Bolton remaining and House Greystark extinguished. Centuries ago, before the conquest, House Bolton again rose up against the King in the North, Harlan Stark. Harlan Stark would siege the Dreadfort, and it took him two years to starve the Boltons out. When he did, the Boltons again bent the knee. Lastly, at an unknown time, some think after the conquest, others before, the Boltons would flay a lord or king of Winterfell. It is unknown if this story is true, but if it is, the king or lord of Winterfell was the grandson of King Brandon the Daughterless and son of Bale the Bard. By the beginning of the series, House Bolton appears to be loyal to their Stark lords, and not keen on starting an uprising. However, as we know, things would change. Fast Bolton facts? Some believe the Night's King was actually a Bolton. The current Lord of the Dreadfort, Roose Bolton, secretly practiced the Lord's Rite of First Night even before the first book begins. This practice is strictly forbidden in the North, and shows our little Boltons to be rebellious as always. And there are some that believe the Boltons have a secret room in the Dreadfort that holds the skin of flayed enemies. Really, even though Theon thinks the Boltons haven't flayed in a thousand years, he admits old habits die hard, and a few other characters in the book seem to believe they still flay people. This video was mostly a setup for the rest of the week, as I'm sure most of you already know about the crazy Boltons. Today starts the beginning of House Bolton Extravaganza. I couldn't come up with a better name for it. We are going to talk about House Bolton characters, theories, and the house's future. I'm trying to fit all this into one week, but if I can't, we may have 1.5 to 2 weeks of House Bolton. You will have your normal Sunday and Wednesday release, and may have a few extra days in there. If you hate this house, I'm also trying to release other Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire topics, but those are in front of camera and on off days.